Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain, upon popular request, how the valving system works in the main jet of a small two-stroke carburettor, such as this one. So this video isn't about how the two-stroke carburettor works, because I already have videos here on YouTube explaining this in detail. So I'm going to explain just how the main jet itself works. So the main jet protrudes out into the inlet of the carburettor here, next to the Venturi, and it reaches upwards through the carb body and into the metering area. And it's the main jet alone that we're now going to focus in on. So the main jet is fitted in situ in the carburettor as it should be under normal working conditions. And this side of the carburettor is the air filter and this side of the carburettor is the engine. That means this is the carburettor body and this is the inlet or the venturi. And we've got the main body of the main jet protruding all the way through as we saw in the actual carburettor. Down at the bottom here there's a tiny neoprene rubber disc. This is the actual photograph of one from a microscope. And sitting here is a disc shaped retaining cover and this is the actual image of of that from a microscope which has the distinguishing feature of the hole in the middle and the four tabs sticking up through the middle. So looking at it from the end of the main jet, the two would be together like this. And therefore, this represents a cross-sectional view of that. And so this neoprene rubber sits loosely in there and there are no other components inside this type of main jet other than these two. So when the engine starts and the vacuum from the piston lowering on the induction stroke in the engine draws air in through the Venturi, that vacuum is also felt here, which pulls hard down on the neoprene rubber disc and it contacts the tabs on the cover disc and the vacuum suction is strong enough to flex the rubber slightly, allowing a space from where air can be drawn from round the edges of it. And now the vacuum can be felt all the way up the fuel tube of the main jet. And this draws down the fuel from the metering area of the carburettor, which takes the same path out round the edge of the rubber disc. It then enters the Venturi and is hit by the air rushing past, atomizing it, before it's all drawn in together into the engine. And as long as the engine is on its induction stroke, fuel will continue to be drawn out of the main jet and into the engine. But when the engine comes to the end of its induction stroke, there are some momentary changes of pressure inside here. Because the airflow has been rushing into the engine, so hard and fast, when the piston actually stops drawing it in, the air doesn't actually want to stop dead in its tracks because it's gained momentum. So for a split second, air still rushing in that can't go anywhere causes this kind of pressure in the induction tube. Now coupled with the absence of the induction vacuum, this outward pushing pressure is felt through the centre of the end cap and pushes the rubber neoprene disc up onto its seat, creating a seal. This prevents any surges of airflow going back the wrong way up the main jet and affecting the vital vacuum pressures inside the metering area of the carburettor. And it's very much the same if there's an engine blowback. Instead of air and fuel coming out of the engine through the carburettor this way and out into the air filter, drawing with it from the main jet and fuel out of there going this way. Because we have the restriction of the Venturi here, the pressure can't just simply pass through that easy. Instead, there's a backup of pressure. All this air and fuel fuel is put under pressure to get through that small restriction and that puts this kind of pressures on the inlet tube again and that pressure pushes up on the rubber neoprene disc creating a seal again stopping any pressures going back up the main jet affecting the metering area. So after that momentary pressure it might be thought that this rubber disc situated in here loosely will allow fuel to flow down out of the main jet and drip out uncontrollably and whilst this type of valving system may stop some fuel from dripping out like this it isn't primarily the main jet itself that controls and prevents this kind of problem. Looking at how the metering system of the carburettor works, under normal working conditions this whole area up here in red should be filled with fuel only. So the only way fuel can run down and seep out of the main jet is if somehow air can get in there and replace the fuel that is lost. Otherwise there's going to be a vacuum in there preventing the fuel from seeping out. So if a main jet was leaking like this then air air would have to be entering the metering area, either through the main jet itself, as the fuel comes out the air goes up in little air bubbles, kind of like when we turn a bottle of water upside down, the water comes out and you can see the air bubbles going to the top of the bottle to replace the water coming out, otherwise there'd be a fluid lock in there preventing the water from escaping, so we can see it from that perspective how it works. But in my opinion air bubbles travelling up the main jet as fuel is coming out is highly unlikely because of how thin the main jet is itself. 
itself. And another possibility could be that the gasket at the top of the metering area here, the seal, isn't sealing correctly, or the cap is loose, which could leak in air into the system and allow for the air to replace the fuel and allow the fuel to drip out. And as for the valve itself, it's this rubber neoprene disc that is supposedly damaged with carburetor cleaning spray and the ethanol that's in fuel. Thankfully, I haven't come across this problem myself. It's what I've been told by others. So I'm certainly not saying it's not true. It's just I haven't had the experience. So as we can see, the valving system inside this main jet wasn't designed solely to stop fuel from escaping. But as some people suggest, there might be a certain pressure that the fuel has to get to before it will come down the main jet and out of this valve. That might definitely be the case. But we can see now what the main functioning of the valve inside this main jet is for. And so this is our main jet on a small two-stroke carburetor such as this one works to the best of my own knowledge and beliefs over the years I've been repairing and researching these types of carburetors. So I want to thank you so much for watching and I hope the information here has helped to educate and clear up a few things you needed to know about the main jets on these kind of carburetors. Please like and subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.